Hello and welcome back to Car Misa. This is Trunk Details Part 5. Once again, this is uh, where I am rebuilding Earl Zausmer's famous red BMW. All right, so uh, it's still really hot out. Only 110 degrees out right now. It's supposed to be uh, in the teens this weekend, 116 to 118, I think. So pretty warm. Um, but at this point, as you can see, this is the backside of the mock-up piece for the floor where the Milbert amps are going to be. Uh, what I'm doing right here, I've got double-sided tape around the perimeter, and I've got these half-inch wood dowels. I'm going to take, finally, that quarter-inch piece of MDF that I've got roughed out. Uh, for those of you who have not seen, uh, I'm doing a flush trim with a router. What I'm going to do is lay that piece on top, pull the dowels out, line everything up, attach the two pieces, <clears throat> and then use a router with a flush trim bit to cut the perimeter. And the bearing will go against this edge. The blade cuts the quarter inch, and that gives me a perfect copy, flaws included, right? So hopefully there's no flaws. But uh, that should be it. We'll uh, get this cut, and we'll check back. All right, if you're not familiar with a flush trim bit and a router, this is basically the way it works. Cutting blade is down here. Bearing is right here. Bearing rides against your main piece, and then the cutting blade obviously cuts this away, and that's what duplicates these two pieces. Okay, here you can see... That piece is obviously because of the flush trim bit, an exact replica, a quarter inch is, of this piece. And then I'm going to give my father the quarter inch. He will then use that as his guide for the zebra wood such that this piece and the zebra wood will be an exact match. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so here is the next step. There is obviously the main three-quarter inch piece. Here's what I'm doing here. Uh, this is the quarter inch piece that I cut. So... The objective for the next part is to transfer all the holes. I'm going to do a count. There's got to be over 50 to this as accurately as possible. So I wanted a means to be able to line the two up, keep them lined up, those two pieces, but also be able to pull them apart and put them back together. So I'm making this jig. I took a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. I've got these pieces. I'm going to um, kind of hold everything together, clamp it down drill a bunch of holes, use these fasteners, and then I can lay the three quarter inch on top of that and everything stays perfectly lined up. And again, I can pull it in and out a thousand times. Um, and because it's effectively a jig, maintain alignment. So let's go ahead and get that built. All right, quick update on this jig. I got everything laid out and I'm very particular. So even these things I spaced out evenly Bring them over here to the drill press. I got my fence set up, and as I drill them, these will be evenly spaced. So I'm gonna drill these here, then I'll clamp them back to this piece up against the edge, and then I'll continue the holes through, and that will make sure that the T-nuts and bolts line up properly. Okay, all the holes are drilled. Now, what I'm going to begin to do is one at a time, as you can see here, I got this clamped. I'll drill through here, and then I'll mount my T-nuts, I'll put the bolts in, and then that'll hold this piece in place, and then I'll move to the next one. I'll probably do that one next, and just kind of work the whole thing together. Checking in on this uh, jig, I just want to show kind of where I'm at and how nice this is coming out. So that goes up against there. It's not exactly perfectly lined up. I have this front edge, but the point I want to make is look at how nice and tight that is. So I'm going to do the sides next. Notice there's no play and then the main three quarter inch piece goes on top of this and then that will serve as my pilot to be able to go through. Um, also, once this is in, and I've got the side pieces that might be really tight to get this out. So I did a little escape hole in the back. I can just push on and push the wood through. Notice all the T-nuts. Everything's lined up nice and solid. And once again, this is just a template or a jig. But um, if you want it done right, take the time and, and prep it properly. Okay, the jig is complete. Um, everything came out really good. Notice I... I uh, did not do little, I had a couple little other pieces there, uh, which was uh, 
a waste because these two side pieces keep it from moving side to side and obviously these two keep it moving uh, this way. So no way it will have any play whatsoever. Uh, if you notice, obviously everything, these two pieces, the quarter inch is in there now and you can see the quarter inch and the three quarter inch are lined up real nice and solid. If I go, let's see if I can lift this one handed. If I lift this up and there's the quarter inch underneath Again, if I place this back in, it's it's like a Ziploc bag kind of fit, like you can see right there. If I move it over again, one-handed, <laughs> there we go. You can notice really nice tight fit and no play. That was kind of the whole, it was a lot of work. I, I think I spent four hours or five hours building that, but it serves its purpose. So. All right, uh, the next thing is gonna be going ahead and starting to drill the holes. Okay, here is an update on the jig and the wiring holes. Uh, first off, if you notice, I went ahead and added washers. I don't know if anybody noticed, I didn't have washers in there, it was driving me crazy. Um, what I've done next is gone through and numbered all of the holes, and I did it in groups, meaning like holes. So if you notice the ones for the, the Milbert uh, tiptoes, these here, are going to be 1 through 10, so on and so forth. There are 69 holes on the on the top face of this, and then there are the seven holes in the front. I'm not going to have my father do the seven holes. I'll do those when I get it back. But it, it was very important. How am I supposed to know, you know, when I give him the quarter-inch piece and it's just got a whole bunch of 16th of an inch holes, he's going to need to know what gets drilled to what depth and if there's countersinks and, and countersunk on the bottom for T-nuts and all of that. So I did like a master list here. I'm going to flip this over, write the numbers on the backside as well for the for the T-nuts and things like that. Then when I go ahead and drill my 16th of an inch pilot holes through to the quarter inch, I'll number the quarter inch on the front and backside as well. So once again, it's a, a carbon copy for my dad. Then I took all these numbers... We'll talk about those in just a minute. And I added these to a Google Sheet that I will share with my father. So if you notice, I have the whole numbers, what component it goes to, you know, all the details about each hole. And then he will take this and then be able to take the corresponding numbers and drill them accordingly. So should be a cool setup, um, a lot of work. There's, it's incredible how many holes I ended up with. So um, real quick here, these are a new addition. Uh, I just picked these up yesterday. These are Bowers and Wilkins Matrix 801s, which were effectively the inspiration for this car. Earl heard these speakers years ago, fell in love with them. They've got this incredible British sound. And so he effectively harvested the drivers out of these and put them in the car. So that is the same woofer. Um, or I'll call it a 13 inch. I think it measures maybe closer to 12, but they're they're big. That's the woofers that are in the fenders. Those are the mids that are on the dash. And then this particular speaker uses um, the, this is the Matrix tweeter, but the car, if you recall, uses the silver signature tweeter out of the SS25. It's got that really cool uh, silver crosshair. Um, and it works well, I think better in a coaxial uh, set up for the car. So these are going to be restored. I'll go through and clean them up. They're just a little dirty. I'll redo all the grill cloth, um, maybe repaint the heads. It's got some scratches here, things like that. Um, but these will serve as a, as a reference for me um, and, you know, have something nice to listen to while I'm building the car as well. So, all right, that is an update for now. I'll give you a quick update once I have gone through and drilled all the 16th of an inch holes into the quarter inch. All right, just want to show uh, kind of what I'm doing. So again, I'm going to do groups of holes. So one through eight are the, for the tiptoes. Uh, as you can see, I had the template in the three quarter inch. I drilled through, marked uh, and drilled into my quarter inch piece. I labeled those one through eight and then just move that piece over to there and then I'll just Put it back on and again that's why i needed this to be able to be um, easily removed in and out that was the purpose of the jig if i double side taped it would be kind of a pain and i really want to be careful and do these holes all in groups so i don't miss anything and don't screw up the numbering so onward we go okay i've got one through uh eight done which are just a simple drill through nine through i gotta check i don't know 14 something like that are where i'm using if you recall 
Um, now I know it's called a transfer screw. Thank you very much, Joe Schmo. But I'll stick with these because I've already got them built and I think I'm quite confident they're they're good and centered. But now you can see the dimple it is made. So now that tells me precisely where to drill. So I'll go through and do those. Just want to show what I'm doing for holes 26 and 27 here. If you recall, these are the ones that go in at an angle uh, for the fuse block, which is tilted at an angle. So they're um, they go in like that. So I can't obviously use this to mark using one of those pointed bolts. So I just, all I did was really carefully triple checked, measured everything out, um, laid it out, and then I'm gonna drill straight through here. And then my dad will, when he's got this on top of the zebra wood, he'll drew, drill straight through just to, just to mark the zebra wood and then he'll drill at the angle. So we should be good there. Okay, cruising along all the way up to number 28. Uh, for these, this next group is going to be these um, countersunk um, furniture bolts. If you recall, these are all the, I think there's 10 of these that go into the floor of the car. And for these, it's a 5 16 hole that I drilled here. I'm going to use this Brad Point bit and just basically drop it in and just mark where center is. And then I'll pull the three quarter out and then I'll drill out the 16th of an inch holes and get the group set. All right, cruising right along up to number 41. Um, for this one, this is the voltage gauge hole. And again, needed to make sure it's centered. So I use the original Forstner bit. The cool thing is here, this is the first thing that touches the surface. So I just very carefully uh, put a dimple there and then I'll drill the eighth inch, or 16th of an inch hole. Okay, holes are all drilled um, and labeled on the new piece of quarter inch. You can see I've got everything uh, lined up very well. Everything came out great. That jig, again, I kept putting these two pieces in and out of the jig and everything lined up perfectly and stayed aligned. So uh, now at this point, what I'm going to do is take both pieces, flip them over, label the um, the whole numbers on the back backside. Uh, again, because there are some that are countersunk, so my dad will need to know which, which those are. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to take some scrap wood and start dialing in the diameters of wire that goes through the floor. So um, get various wire RCAs, power, ground, remote, uh, turn on, things like that. The power cable for the, uh, the 110 outlet for the inverter, things like that. So I'll test it on scrap, get the exact hole sizes, and then add that to the sheet. But uh, here you can see, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be, a bunch of 16-inch holes that are labeled, and then my father can use that as a little guide and be able to transfer that to the zebra wood. Okay, I've got the both backside, the bottoms are numbered. Did it on both pieces, that way my father has a question, I can answer it. So I got them all good to go. Next is... Um, Testing drill hole sizes for wires. Uh, one cool thing I want to show you, it's, I think it's about five o'clock. It's warm in the garage. It's warm outside, it's 115 outside. Uh, welcome to Arizona, but it's a dry heat, they say. It's hot as hell, no matter what. All right, um, some more things that I'm doing here. Uh, if you notice, I drew out the Kind of the seams for the four pieces of zebra wood. I've also labeled those as quadrant one, two, three, and four. And that way, um, I'm also going to transfer and name those on the actual zebra wood. And I'll be using clear plexiglass templates that I'm going to make for that to kind of figure out the grain and where the grain's going to butt up and all that. I got a cool idea there. Um, <clears throat> I've also I'm going to include these jigs that I built. If you recall, I built these for um, drilling these holes all in a straight line. And I'll give these to my father just as an alternative. These came out really nice and straight, but some of them are maybe a 32nd off. So, but these are closer. So, um, <clears throat> what I'm doing here is I just label these so my father knows which one goes where. Uh, effectively, the ends with the correlating numbers. And then if he wants to use those instead for, you know, these, these holes in between, he's able to do that and get a little bit more precision there. And then on his side, I've got the quadrants listed out as well. All right, we'll keep going from here. 
Okay, back to the jig for a minute. <clears throat> um, I kind of realized something, and as a result, I doubled up on these pieces of wood. So when my father does the zebra wood, he will have a piece of, it's going to be three quarters of an inch, and then he'll use this eighth, uh, the quarter inch piece on top of it, and then use that as his gauge, you know, and, and jig to be able to drill through. With these being only three quarters of an inch tall, when he goes to put the quarter inch on top, it's going to slide around. There was nothing for it. So just to kind of build sides up, I just doubled up these pieces. And once again, as you can see, it's a really good tight fit. Um, and that should be very precise as he lines things up. Okay, now that I have the, you know, the jig is all set. Got that all good over there. And then... Um, Got this all ready to go. I've been working on sourcing some street wires, power, and ground. I've got some awesome people. Um, one guy in Australia just reached out, and he's got um, a few different items that I need. So um, really amazing. The card, your community, especially going global. Uh, pretty cool. Um, so here's what I'm doing next. I need to figure out these four quadrants, if you will. Um, where are those pieces are going to be cut out of the zebra wood. So here's my idea. We'll see how this goes. I ordered some of this thin plexiglass, real thin. I am going to double side tape these pieces, one, two, three, four, so that all four of these, you know, the corners, everything lines up good here. Uh, double side tape it to this. I'll flip it over. I've got a plexiglass knife and I'll run along this edge and I'll cut, trim the plexi. Then I have four clear pieces that represent each quadrant. I'll label those. Then I'll bring them over to the zebra wood and start kind of laying that out and figure out where I want the green pattern to line up and all of that. So let's see how it goes. All right, plexiglass is double side taped. Uh, this is the plexiglass cutter. Some of you may be familiar with these. I've never used one. So my hope is I can flip this over, put it over there on that table and run this along the perimeter of the wood and hopefully it'll cut properly. I know I've got to make a few passes and then that should give me the four quadrants made out of plexi. Let's give it a shot. Plexiglass is cut. Now I'll peel off all the backing and label each of these uh, four pieces. Okay, that's kind of what I was going for. So um, the only thing is the plexiglass is not I don't know what happened. It's not perfectly square or whatever. So my line's off by uh, maybe a 16th or so. That's not critical. What again, I'm gonna be using these for is I'll take this, bring it over to these plexiglass pieces, bring it over to the zebra wood and I can lay this over the top of the zebra wood, figure out where I want all the patterns and seams and all of that. So I might even take photos of, once I get these on, I'll, I'll maybe run a perimeter of like masking tape around the zebra wood, you know, like create a box and this would be inside the box. And then I may um, have those printed and then like on like eight and a half by 11 and then cut them out so that they're just a smaller version of this with a photograph of all the green. Then I can take those and kind of make sure everything looks good and effectively get a picture of what the green would look like. So, um, also, bad news on the zebra wood. I, um, it was in wrapped in plastic and it looked pretty decent. I took the plastic off and it still warped as hell. So that's another reason I'm doing these pieces because the, the zebra wood's like four and a half feet long, the strips, and 11 inches wide. This is, these are nine and three quarters. And I did that specifically so that I wasn't, I kind of straddled, if you notice where the holes are. So I didn't want to have a bunch of holes going down the seam. I have the seam on this one, this one, there's four, this one, and this one, which there's nothing I can do about. But um, I'm hoping with the smaller pieces of zebra wood, by the time we cut them down, the warp issue won't be as bad. But I still have to definitely um, figure that out. I would ask if anybody knows how to fix warp wood, let me know. But by the time you guys are seeing this video, it's either fixed or I'm going to have the most expensive fire I've ever had in my life. So hopefully I can get this fixed. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So I am laying out the pieces of zebra wood. And as you can see, get rid of that reflection. 
I've also just kind of just took a marker real quick and laid out where the milberts are going to be. This is the uh, 845 display tube. So this is the quadrants two and four, the ones that are going to be um, kind of, you know, visible right in that area when you look in. And then these are going to be one and three, the ones that are further right up against the back seat. But again, if you notice, it's not perfect because it's a, it's a tree. <laughs> so, um, but the objective is to have mirror images. If you look here, like I, this is what's cool about the Plexi. This is exactly why I wanted to do this. Um, this marks the where the cracks stop if you recall there's some cracks on the end of the wood and this is kind of my safe line here so if my father cuts it here um we know there's definitely no cracks so and in looking at this i really like like this kind of little accent see that there i think that's really sharp so now with the plexi and with the placement of the milberts I can kind of play around with this and, and get that right where I want it so that you'll see it right on the ends of the Milberts. Um, so that'll be, if this, you know, if you're looking in the car, that little accent piece would be right there. So it'll be, and that'll be visible with the side panels in the trunk and everything. So that was the objective of <clears throat> using the plexiglass to be able to do this, lay it out, get it symmetrical, I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing that word by now, but I'm a big proponent of it. But you can see that mirror image kind of a thing going on. The warp is still, I'm literally losing sleep, guys. I was up at 3.30 this morning, couldn't sleep, tossing and turning, and trying to figure out what I could do with this. My thought is that when these four pieces are cut down, the warp is far less pronounced because you're dealing with smaller pieces. If you notice the that this piece right here just really just flares up like that um the last foot is the worst part and that's coming that's just going to be scrap i'll use that to test stains and clears and all that so um the next thing i'm going to do is take some yellow tape once i get the final placement of these and i'll yellow tape the perimeter that way i can really see it you know kind of clearly um and also i'll leave that on there for my father so he has an idea of kind of a reference point for himself so Let's keep going from here. Okay, this will give you a better idea. The yellow represents the perimeter of each of the pieces of wood. So those are the four pieces of wood. Um, this kind of allows me to visualize and make sure I like the, the grains and the patterns and make sure everything lines up. I also did a pencil mark for the perimeters. <clears throat> this again is the end that's better and there's a bit of cupping going on there. That far end right here in this corner is by far the worst, and it curls up real bad right there. But again, that'll be cut off. And if you look here, I haven't measured this yet, but that might be an eighth or three sixteenths where this piece starts. And here, it might be three eighths. So the difference is about a quarter from this end to this end in terms of the twist within this piece. So if the difference is a quarter, that piece is about an inch thick. So um, if we can plane using a sled, plane off the high spots, get it flat, we might be able to maintain three quarters or again, um, half inch even if, if worse comes to worse. But that should be it for now. Thank you. At this point, I am pretty confident with the way I have everything laid out in terms of the plexiglass out of the zebra wood. So if you notice, the wood is lined up the pattern all the way up there and I've laid out the plexiglass pieces to try to capture I do again stay away from the cracks and really try to capture the the grain this is the little part that I really like I wanted to make sure that is visible next to the Milberts and then this area you will see um, so these will be the two pieces that are closest up against the rear seat I like that little kind of a signature in the grain there as well. This side and this side of the seat, the, the part that are up against the seat, I might be doing a fold down rear seat, whereas right now it just has the ski hole. And if I do a full fold down rear seat, which was not available in the United States, so I'd have to fabricate the whole thing or buy one from Europe, um, you would be able to see a lot more of this. So we'll see on that, I gotta, I gotta get the trunk done. So. Um, what I'm going to do at this point, take a pencil, pencil out the perimeter, 
and then I will lay tape on the perimeter and then that way my dad knows kind of where I am looking to harvest the main pieces out of. With regard to the warp and the twisting, you can see how bad it is on that end, but if there's any silver lining, here's the thing. If you look right here, there's a there's a gap and right there, there's a gap there. The On that piece of wood, once that is sectioned out, this is gonna be the worst piece. It's not as bad, obviously, as like the entire thing, which is really nasty on the last foot. That's just gonna be waste. You know, I'll use that first scrap. But I'm hoping that he is able to run this through a planer or a drum sander. It's right now, it's a half an, or excuse me, it's one inch thick in this area, or just under an inch thick. And I could go down, I wanted it three quarters, but I figured out a way where I could go down to half inch if needed. Or, again, there's been some talk about just doing a quarter inch, uh, take it all down to a quarter inch and then laminate that to a piece of substrate, like a uh, half inch piece of birch plywood, glue it all on. And then uh, I was talking to my buddy today, Joe, what's up, buddy? Um, He's really, really knowledgeable with woodworking as well. And he was saying that um, that might be a good idea because then the wood is not as strong and it's not going to, you know, start to want to wander and crack and do all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get this laid out and then um, this will close out this video. Uh, and in the next video, it's all going to be the prep, uh, shipping all the stuff to my dad, getting everything packed up. There won't really be a whole lot of content there, but... Um, once this stuff goes off to dad, then I think what I'm going to do is start working on all the components that are hanging off the rear deck. This two C1 changers, P1 X1 processors, two Zapco amps. I'm either going to start working on that stuff or I'm going to finalize all the equipment that goes on the Milbert floor, um, get it all prepped for gold. So we'll see because I'm going to have to play around with some of that stuff while I'm the measuring out this stuff. So I'll figure that out. But, uh, once again, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully by the time you're watching this, <clears throat> I am back to sleeping well because we've got this twisted wood thing figured out. But uh, we'll talk to you soon, and thanks again.